This demonstration video is designed for users to develop a sine curve. Some topics specifically covered would be lists of data, how to patternize a list of data, how to generate mathematical modifiers, and then finally, creating a sine curve from mathematically derived points. Step one is to generate a sequence of numbers from 0 to 360. We'll use a separate mathematical system in order to create a mask that will separate our even and odd numbers. From the library, bring in the node called sequence. Sequence is going to be where we input our start number, the amount of numbers, and the step between each number generated. Our static numbers are going to be the start point of 0, the amount of 360, and the step will be number 1. After running the definition, if you hover over sequence, you'll see a preview of the data that it generated. Otherwise, you can add a watch node and view it from that location. Our goal here is to filter out the odd or the even numbers in order to generate separate lists. To do this, we will use the list.filterbyBool mask. Its description says that it filters a sequence by looking up corresponding indices in a separate list of booleans. On the left, we have the list that it requires, which would be the numbers we just generated. And below that, it says mask. And the mask is described as booleans. This is an example of beginning with the end in mind from module one. Our objective is to find a node that will generate a Boolean mask list. It takes a lot of experience to really know off the top of your head where these come from. The one that we will use is a testing operator that says equal to x, y. That tests whether or not the x input or list of inputs is equal to the y input. This is found by searching for equal equal or going to the operators list in your library. Similarly, I can test whether or not my original list of numbers is divisible by a certain numerical integer. With equal equal, I have to test whether or not something is equal to y. I can't yet plug in my original numerical list into the x and test it against y because every individual number is unique. However, if I use in the operators menu the is x divisible by y node, I can test that entire list of numbers to see whether or not it is odd or even. If, if my list is divisible by, say, 2, then the output would be a measure of whether or not it's odd or even. That output, after you run the definition with your sequence connected, and two going to the y, that output will give you a list of zeros and ones. That list of zeros and ones can be measured for equality with the number zero as your y input, which when run will produce your true and your false, otherwise known as your Boolean list, which would be your mask for your list filter. Plug a watch node in to the in or the out or both of the Boolean mask and you'll see that your odd numbers and your even numbers are now separated. Now that this idea is complete, I'm going to group it and name it odd slash even test. My next and final exploration in this module is going to begin with the same sequence that I've already generated. Select the numerical inputs as well as the sequence nodes from the group and copy and paste them to an area below. To generate the sine curve, we're going to use the node known as polycurve by points. My typical workflow usually includes placing these nodes on the right side so that I can work left to right in order to fill in the gaps and make the connections. Polycurve by points has two separate inputs. It has a list of points and it has a Boolean input to determine whether or not the end of the polycurve needs to return back to the first point. The default for this is set to false, which is what we want for our exploration today. 
Considering the fact that polycurve by points requires points, I'll need a node that will generate those points. Point by coordinates will require an x, a y, and a z axis in order to create a group or list of points. For my exploration, I could plug this sequence into the x input directly. However, my numerical values are of a range from 0 to 360. Dynamo borrows its units from Revit. So if I plug in my points in the x direction up to 360, that means that my overall sine curve is going to be 360 feet long. For me right now, that's kind of undesirable. So what I'll do, what I'll do in order to limit the maximum length that this sine curve can be, is I'll just throw on a conversion from degrees to radians, which in this case is really just meant to filter out the larger numbers and bring everything down to a lower level. We could also do this with simple division. In order to get a properly graphable X position for all of the points in my sequence, I have to filter them through a degrees to radians conversion. Math.degreesToRadians is going to allow us to delimit our, our graph extents. By filtering the sequence through the degrees to radians conversion and connecting it to the x input, we've settled all of our x coordinate requirements. The y coordinate is where the sine mathematical operator is going to be plugged in. Once you've brought the sine node into the workspace, you'll see that it requires an angle on the left and produces the product of the sine on the right. In reality, we could just plug in the sequence directly into the angle and then the sine directly into the point by coordinates y input. However, I want to be able to parametrically modify the wavelength of this sine curve. I can do that by adding a multiplier before the sine input. So sequence plugs into the x of the multiplier and we add a number slider to the y of the multiplier. The default values of the number slider sometimes are not properly scaled to the project we're working on. If you click the arrow to the left of the number slider, it will expand the settings menu. The settings menu can be modified by simply typing in a new numerical value. The minimum amount that it could possibly be would be zero. The maximum amount for us would be something like five. And the step is perfectly fine at 0.1. Then we plug our multiplier into the angle. We add a second multiplier at the end of the sine curve. We add the same multiplier to the end of the sine curve using the same settings. And then we plug that into the Y input. When you hit run, you'll see that a curve has appeared in the background 3D workspace. Make sure that you can see it well enough before modifying the sliders, and then switch your manual processing over to automatic. After doing that, you'll see that the sine curve now becomes a fully functioning parametric object where the first slider now determines and modifies the wavelength, and the second slider now modifies the amplitude. After successfully completing our first introductory level algorithm, we can complete module two. If you'd like to continue along this path with abstract exercises, the Dynamo Primer has a library of exercises that could serve us well before moving on to an applied project. However, this course is now moving into module three, entitled Developing Skeletons for Parametric Geometry. Topics covered include using points and curves to construct, deconstruct, and reconstruct geometry for structural skeletons. An introduction to the use of coordinate planes and vectors and normals, and how important they are for developing an underlying structure for our project. We will fully explore the value of parametric properties in the design process for when we as the designers or the clients request a change further down the road in the project. And we will revisit lists in a way that requires us to custom modify the organization of the list in order to generate triangulation. The images you've just seen are just some of what you have to look forward to in Module 3 and 4.